Coming up, it's a fight to the finish as the BU Terriers crash into the postseason and look to take home a championship. As the BU Terriers return from winter break, their season is heading in the wrong direction after a devastating loss to Maine on January 6th. We're three games under 500. National tournament rankings come out and we're, you know, mid-30s. Everyone knew we had a lot more to give on the ice, and I really think people took that to heart in the locker room, and you could feel the change when break got over. Bobo Carpenter, Carpenter now racing it over the line. Whoa. Rooster to go, Bobo Carpenter! You know, we weren't playing bad hockey early, we weren't playing enough winning hockey, and there is a difference. I thought after that January 6th game, uh, things started to turn just a little bit from a play standpoint and a mentality standpoint. I think we all kind of got together and said, if we win two in a row, we can win 10 in a row. And I think we started to trust each other more and have confidence in ourselves. When that happened, the ball started to get rolling and just went on from there. After their mid-season gut check, the Terriers stage a remarkable turnaround losing just two games during the rest of the regular season and storm into the Hockey East playoffs against UConn on a high note. I thought our guys were confident going into the playoffs. Games that we would lose in November, we were finding ways to win in late January and February, and I think that carried over into March. The, the team responded really well. You know, we were kind of playing some desperate hockey the last couple months, and the way everyone responded with the, like, the amount of effort they gave at practice and end lifts, and, especially like during games and stuff and the way things were going, it just seemed like you know, we, we got hot at the right time. You can see it from the games, you can feel it on the bench, everyone is really dialed in. We uh, had some good games there in that series. Go, Bolo Carpenter to give the Terriers game one. Woo! Game two is another hard fought affair with neither team giving an inch. Late in the second of a tie game, freshman Logan Cockrell steps up with the game winner. Bowers now with a steal from Masonis. Bowers in front, Cockrell holds and scores! Morgan Cockrell! That, that was a big time goal, to show that type of poise and to you know, wait out Huska and roof it the way he did. You know, that's a high-end play. I know Q would have wanted me to one-time that because he really wants the shots off quick, but I couldn't get a handle on it. And just gave him a little pump fake and then put it up top, and that was a great feeling. That was a great goal for us. Up next for the Terriers, it's a do or die showdown at the TD Garden in the Hockey East semifinals against who else? Their biggest rivals, the Boston College Eagles. Just like that, Boston College is on the board in the first minute of play. The rebound and a terrific save by Ottinger. Rebound, Pope High. Puck in front, score! Just like that, off the faceoff. And the Eagles have a 2 0 lead. All BC deep into the second period, but with their backs against the wall, Boston University refuses to go quietly. Now the opportunity score! Puck came away to the far side. Amonte was there and he buries it. And Terrier Nation comes to life in the garden. Greenway got it started. Chris now slides it across. Score! David Ferentz and the quick strike capability of the Terriers tying this game up at two apiece. BC responds to take the lead once more heading into the third period. But once again, the Terriers will not lie down. Senior forward Drew Melanson answers. Front score! We're tied again! Just like that, Melanson ties it up with 434 to go. The building was absolutely insane and we just kept climbing away like our backs were against the wall and you know we didn't quit. It makes it that much sweeter at the end when we came back and won that game. Here's a turnover in front, point blank, SCORE! Patrick Curry gets the goal in overtime! It was pretty wild, I mean, probably the biggest goal I've ever scored. I don't really know what I really did on the celebration. I don't know, I remember just trying to skate away from my teammates and everybody coming and grabbing me and it was just a, it was just a great moment. And the Terriers! to fight another day. Those are the games that you remember, like those are pretty special to be able to beat BC and move on to the Hockey's Championship. We were pretty confident. I don't think a whole lot of people were giving us uh, props to you know the kind of run we were on. Really showed that we were a good hockey team and we were meant to be there. 
coming up next. The Terrier season is on the line as they take on Providence College for the Hockey East Championship. Stay with us. Tonight, the BU Terriers will take the ice against Providence College at the TD Garden. It's the biggest game of the year. Win, and they will be Hockey East champions and earn a trip to the NCAA tournament. Lose, and their season is over. Yeah, our guys were eager. They were ready. I had a great feeling going into that game. I think everybody else did around our team. And boy, I thought that was probably as complete a game as we played all year. In the dressing room before, I just kind of had this feeling that something special was going to happen. We were going to like play one of our best games of the year. Just the feeling amongst the guys, and it was a really good atmosphere to be around. And that just obviously translates to the ice. You know, in order to win trophies like we did, you need guys to to step up. Hey, we put ourselves in a great position. There should be passion and enthusiasm and 20 people pulling in the same direction and how sweet it is when this thing ends. Enjoy every second of this, okay? And the best way to enjoy it is skate, hit, pass, shoot better than they do. 20 people pulling in the same direction to win a championship. Let's make sure we're dialed in, all right? <laughs> Top line forwards Brady Kachuk and Jordan Greenway come out flying for BU in a high intensity first period. Looking at it from back here, it looked like he just run out of real estate cut to the net there. I don't think he takes a run that high. I ran out of the post. will end it. So a busy first period for Jake Ottinger. 0-0 zero, zero after one. Hey, what period of it wasn't our best. We all know that. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. It wasn't our best. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's go play a lot better here, right? Oh, yeah, that's a good one, eh? All day. All day. Play physical here. Still scoreless in the second, BU grabs the momentum, led by the tenacious physical play of number 18, Jordan Greenway. They can't handle you, Green, you got it. Crotty fires it through, and traffic in front, hockey down, now he gets back up, bouncing around, here's the back hit from Chris and the rebound, just went the side, he throws it back to the front of the net one more time, and Boston University with a full court press, here to end the period. Got lucky on that one, we're coming though, we're coming, we're, gonna, we're not stopping baby, Woo! Hey boys, this is the last stretch right here. Everyone's got to leave everything out there. If everyone does that, it's going to be a fun outcome. Boy, Keep it simple. Me up Have some fun here. That wasn't a fluke, and it wasn't the end of it. They're going to get more tired. They're going to get more tired. We got four lines rolling. You got to win a period. You win a championship. Let's go win a period. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Hey, big time players, big time games. We're not done, we're not done. Early in the third, BU's relentless pressure finally pays off for senior Drew Melanson and the Terriers. I kind of found a soft area, and Greeny makes a great heads up play, finds me, and I just let one go before the goalie could get set. In front, score! Puck came off the boards to Drew Melanson! We expect championships at BU, and I'm sitting here like, you know, what do I got to do like, to, to be a part of a championship team? If you look at a video or pictures of our bench after Bobo put that goal in, I mean. Bouncing puck, Carpenter gets it, Boston University with the empty net goal. You know, it's, 
those moments, you, I won't ever forget that. And uh, you know, celebrating with the team on the bench and on the ice after it was it was special. And for the ninth time, the Boston University Terriers are the champions of hockey. State two nothing win over the Providence College Friars here at TD Garden. An unbelievable accomplishment for the Terriers, and definitely a full team effort. And with so many clutch performances, picking just one deserving player for tournament MVP is no easy task. This year's winner is the tournament's most valuable player from Boston University, Jake Ottinger. You know, the, the MVP and whatnot doesn't really uh, matter. You know, it's the reason you come to BU, and it has been a dream of mine since I first uh, played here and played my first championship game, and I sort of finally be on the other end of one. And, um, to be putting up a banner again, this is a really special feeling. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the presentation of the Lamorello Trophy, for the ninth time in program history, your champions, the Boston University Terriers. Let me tell you, I've been very lucky in my coaching career and playing career. I can't tell you how jacked up I am for everybody in this room. I can't tell you how proud I am of you. I can't tell you how much fun it's been coaching you. And I can't tell you that this is not over. This is not over. And I'm telling you, we've got everything in us to win the whole thing. This is no fluke. The best team in this league won the league championship. Great job. <laughs> Worcester, Massachusetts is the scene for game one of the NCAA Northeast Regionals. The Terriers will be facing one of the best teams in the country, the Big Red of Cornell, a team that beat BU at Madison Square Garden back in November. We knew the, what we were up against. You're talking about a team that's big, strong, fast, uh, had lost five games all year. I thought that we matched up pretty well against them. In November, we were still a really raw and kind of uh, shaky team at that point, and we'd grown a lot since, and so I think that is why we felt really confident going into that game. Obviously, there was that little, little feeling that we needed to uh, pay them back a bit, and I felt like that was something that went a long way, and it was an extremely tight game, a difficult game to play in. I think going into that game, we were pretty, pretty confident as well because we, we were riding a little bit of a roll from the, the hockey's tournament and then coming into the game against Cornell, we were super excited to play in front of everyone as well, so it worked out really well. All this is about is doing what we've been doing. We don't need to change a damn thing. 60 minutes of purposeful hockey and everything will take care of itself. Like I said, you control what happens tonight. You control what happens tonight. You're the better hockey team, and everybody in this room knows it. Get up in here, man. Woo! It's Cornell, the top seed, against BU, the number four in the Northeast Regional. DCU Center in Worcester, ready to roar. Ty Amati, slithering, turns the corner, tries to wrap, and Goliath beat him back to the post. Fago on the drop from a lot. He'll fire, and that's eaten up by Ottinger. If Cornell had to pick a rink to play us in, they'd pick Worcester. Uh, there's no room behind the nets. There's no corner. But I just liked our mentality and our tenacity. It was a man's game. I mean, there was not a lot of room out there. I mean, it was physical. It was fast. It was everything you would want in a playoff game. On the move, Curry overlapping with Crone. Nice toe drag move, wrap around, and Goliath sniffed that out. And that's going to do it for the opening 20 minutes of regional play. BU and Cornell are tied up at zero after one. Barron fires a stick save for Ottinger. Lock and Chris, and on the go, Malak fires off the shoulder of Ottinger. Donaldson feeds, quick trigger, score! Trevor Yates gives Cornell the lead. Cornell strikes first, but the Terriers bite back just 36 seconds later. Carpenter drifting wide. Hickey fans on the first attempt. The rebound score! BU ties it quickly. Bowers was lurking. 
Chris moves it for Kachuk. Then Greenway inside on the shovel shot. Galarda stopped it, lost the rebound. Backhand chance was snuffed out too. As the Terriers pour on the pressure. On the hop comes Malak. Malak, toe drag move, gets wide, goes right to the front and right through the paint. Bring it this way, Vanderland drive, and a glove save for Ottinger. And that's where this second period will come to its conclusion. BU and Cornell, 1-1 one, one through 2. Everybody's going to dig a little deeper. Everybody's going to play a little bit smarter. Everybody's going to play a little faster. And everybody has to play with a little more physicality. We do that, we're playing them tomorrow afternoon. Let's go have a good period. <laughs> 20 minutes left to go in regulation for a date tomorrow in the Northeast Regional Semifinal. It's the third period of a tie game with two storied college hockey programs fighting to keep their seasons alive when the Terriers break through and earn their redemption over Cornell. Brady Kachuk drifts below the goal line, feeds, drives, goal! Ferentz gives BU the advantage. Six on five for the guys in white. Long drive. Knocked down in front and Carpenter clears. Off the wall, the top row. Empty net waiting. Bullseye. Logan Cockrell seals the deal. I mean, we've been talking about this for two and a half months. Winning championships isn't easy. Winning games like this isn't easy. And you can just look in your face. I can see it in the faces with the sweat and the effort that we put in today. We deserve to win again. And that's all we need to keep doing. I can't tell you how proud I am of you. But I'm also going to tell you, I am not one ounce surprised. And I don't think anyone in this room is. Nobody expected not to win today. And we're not expecting to do anything but win tomorrow. Let's go win tomorrow. Boston University lives to fight another day. Up next, the Terriers look to punch their ticket to the Frozen Four. We'll be right back. season rolls on with the NCAA Northeast Regional Final against a tough Michigan squad. A win sends the Terriers to the Frozen Four. A loss will end their season. You pulls the trigger. Score! Michigan on top. Greenway fires. Score! Greenway ties it for the Terriers. Want to wrap around here? Score! Patrick Curry! Back in! Score! Melanson off the turnover! This game is tied! Chris, long mister on the way, eaten up by Pastion. Empty net waiting, he takes a shot, he scores! This is the worst part of this job. It's been a hell of a ride. For the guys that are coming back next year with some valuable lessons and some great experiences. And for the seniors, four straight national tournaments, won a lot of hockey games, and you left an incredible imprint on this program. And you made BU proud. There's so much that goes into a team and winning and losing, and we showed an incredible amount of the characteristics you need to win. And we'll be back. For all the guys back in this room, we'll be back. We'll get another crack at it. That I can guarantee you. A difficult end to an incredible season. The Terriers' remarkable second half led to a Hockey East Championship and another NCAA tournament appearance. Unfortunately, it just didn't finish the way the team wanted. Obviously, we always want to win a national championship, but you know, you win a Hockey East Championship, you dig yourself out of an 8, 11 to 1 hole and win 22 games. Uh, you see the progression of the underclassmen, how much better they've gotten. I thought Chad Chris had. An unbelievable last month. I mean, I thought Chad was immense. He played his best hockey for sure. It's awesome to get recognized for your, for your own play. I think, you know, everybody will say team first, and, and that's definitely important. You know, it's just it's just something for me to, to be motivated in the off season here and, and uh, come back have even better a year next year. We left it all out there, which you have to. You can't have any regrets. But uh, I think that just gives us more fuel for next year and to really make that next jump and get to the Frozen Four. And speaking of making the jump. 
junior forward Jordan Greenway immediately moves up to the NHL with the Minnesota Wild. You know, he was ready for sure. And, you know, I thought he played his best hockey as well once he got back to the Olympics, but I thought he was playing good hockey before he left. And he was a dominant player in college hockey, and you know, uh, he was ready for the next challenge. And he's going to have a great career. What an impact he made on and off the ice. For the team's graduating seniors, it is a bittersweet moment. They have known tremendous success in their four years on ComAv, but now it's time to move on. Well, I think he played his best hockey, I thought, the second half of the year. I thought Nick Olson had a really good playoffs. And, you know, Chase Phelps had a really good playoffs. And, you know, Diffley and McLeod have been big parts of our success over the last four years. And, you know, those guys mean an awful lot to our program. They mean an awful lot to me personally. Four straight NCAA tournament appearances, a couple hockey championships, played for a national championship. You know, I'm sure the emotions are still raw with the season ending and their careers ending, but uh, hopefully when they look back on their careers, they're as proud of it as we are. It was awesome. It was the best four years of my life. Just being able to have that success at this program and kind of uh, leave it with uh, a positive footprint, I guess, it's, uh, it's definitely a nice feeling. That was the most special experience of my life playing here, and you know, I couldn't thank everyone in my class enough for going through it with me because you know, they're my brothers, and it's been something that's been so special to me to have kind of that brotherhood with them and you know it's really hard to obviously see it come to an end the way it did but you know I'm super proud of everyone the way they performed and obviously coach Quinn did an amazing job he's an unbelievable coach and he always has great supporting staff around him and they do such an amazing job with the, with the teams and you know they're going to keep winning in the future.